For the second part of Southeast Asian art, we're going to discuss about the arts and crafts. First, we have Thailand. Sky Lantern Festival Flying lanterns are made out of rice paper with a bamboo frame, which contain a fuel cell or small candle. When the fuel cell is lit, the flame heats the air inside the lantern, causing the lantern to rise. Once airborne, the sky lantern will rise until the fuel cell or candle stays light. When the candle burns out, the sky lantern floats back to the ground. In Thailand, flying lanterns are used during the year for festivals. The most popular is the Loi Kratong Festival. This festival is held on the night of the 12th full moon, usually in November with Chiang Mai believed to have the brightest and most spectacular celebrations. All of Phuket's major West Coast beaches take part in Loi Kratong festivities, with a mix of locals and tourists. Patong Beach and Nai Harn around the lake usually have the most activity with locals visiting beaches like Karun and Kata. Sky lanterns or witch lanterns as they are also commonly known have been become popular on the main tourist beaches of Phuket. Cambodia and Laos Handicaps Indigenous people represent 1.5% of the total population in Cambodia and the majority of them live in remote rural areas within the country. Often referred to as Highlanders, their ways of life are different from the Lowlanders both from the cultural and economic perspective. Handicrafts are part of their traditional culture and their livelihood as they produce textiles, baskets, jars, pottery, and other tools for their daily use. Many indigenous groups have established small enterprises and produced traditional products to generate supplementary income in order to support their livelihood. The handicraft sector provides vital employment opportunities to most indigenous artisans and disadvantaged people, especially women who are struggling for survival. In this country, they make paper by hand in the wider region for over 700 years using the bark of the local sap or mulberry tree. The bark is crushed and soaked in water until it dissolves into a paste. The liquid is then scooped out, poured through a bamboo sieve, and finally placed in a thin layer on a bamboo bed and dried in the sun. Traditionally, sa paper was used for calligraphy and for making festive temple decorations, umbrellas, fans, and kites. In former times, it was also used as a filter in the man manufacture of lacquerware. In recent years, the art of saw paper handicraft has been revived, particularly in Lawang Prabang, northern Laos, where it is now used to create lamp sheets, writing paper, greeting cards, and bookmarks. Our next stop is Malaysia. Wow Kite in Malay is a uniquely designed Malaysian kite. Its wings are similar to an Arabic letter. This kite making tradition comes naturally to Malaysian people, especially in the eastern states of the Malayan Peninsula. Farmers use kites as scarecrows in the fields and as a means to lull the children to sleep so they could work with little interruption. Now, kite flying has become a popular sport not just in Malaysia but also internationally. Malaysia has been celebrating kite festivals annually like the Pasir Gudang International Kite Festival. These kite festivals encourage more tourists to visit their country. Next is Indonesia. Wayang Kulit or Shadow Puppet Tree is famous in Indonesia. Wayang in modern Indonesian language means show or perform. 
Kulit means skin, a reference to the leather material that the figures are carved out of it. Others say that wayang is also attributed to the Indonesian word bayang, which means shadow. Wayang kulit is a type of puppet shadow play performed around the Indo-Malayan archipelago, tracing its origin to India. It is derived from a Javanese Hindu Buddhist tradition where handcrafted leather puppets depict epic stories of the gods in a shadow play. A traditional gamelan orchestra would accompany the storytelling. The puppets come in all sizes ranging from 25 cm to 75 cm. The puppets are usually made out of buffalo and goat hide and mounted on a bamboo sticks. The characters are usually represented by several versions in a set. The best puppets are made from a young female water buffalo parchment and the curing can take up to 10 years. The Performance of Wayang Kulit The puppets are moved behind a cotton or linen screen by a dalang or a puppet master in a shadow puppet place. The dalang tells the story, interpret, and voices each character, producing sound effects with speech and movement and manipulates all the figure between the lamp and the screen to bring the shadows to life. Most shadow play is based on two epic stories from India, the Mahabharata and the Ramayana. The Balinese and the Javanese have combined the Hindu stories with Buddhist and Muslim ideas mixed with their own folklore. And lastly, we have Brunei. The sungko, or also called as pichi or kopia, is a cap widely worn in Indonesia, Brunei, Malaysia, Singapore, the Southern Philippines, and Southern Thailand, mostly among Muslim males in formal gatherings such as wedding feasts, funerals, or festive occasions such as the Muslim Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. The sungko came to be associated with Islam in Malaysia, while in Indonesia, Pichi is also associated with the nationalist secular movement. In Brunei Darussalam, men's headgears are categorized into three. The star, which is a piece of cloth tied around the head. Songkuk or kopya, a type of cap made from velvet. Tangkuluk or serban, which resemble a turban and is typical headdress in the Middle East. After a period of time, the wearing of sungkuk became a tradition and synonymous with being a Malay. Gradually, it replaced the star as part of the Malay's national dress on most formal occasions. The value of sungkuk wearing is taught to the young both at home and school. An adult may not want to wear the sungkuk all the time, but he will certainly wear it on various important occasions. Naturally, there are people who habitually wear the sungkuk most of their waking hours. However, in former times, the act of not wearing it was usually associated with piety. Nowadays, people have the option to wear the sungkuk to fulfill traditional religious requirements or not at all. Some government servants are given sungkuks with appropriate decorations as part of their uniforms. Southeast Asian people show their artwork through fabrics and exhibit other artworks through festivals. Do you think Southeast Asia can offer more kinds of artworks?